I'm in Hampton, New Hampshire, here at the largest seafood festival that New England has to offer. There is a lot to see here, but I'm mainly here for how East Coast does their chowder, so let's go check it out. It's the 24th year of the Hampton Beach Seafood Festival, and I'm starting with this year's winner for best bisque and best chowder, the Rye Harbor Lobster Pound. Hey there. Hi. How are you? Great. This place looks like it's off the hook. Yes, right? we are. I think I want to try the Montauk salad, okay. the lobster bisque, yep. and the fluffy chowder. My fluffy chowder. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds great. This is the Montauk shrimp scallop and mussel in a fresh lemon thyme vinaigrette, okay. still made by hand. Mm. This is the bisque. Oh, so rich. So good. Sorry, let me try the fluffy chowder now. Oh, creamy New England style chowder with mm. lobster on top. The lobster is in the butter sherry sauce. Mm. So why is it called fluffy chowder? My husband eats all the food that's here, so we took a took a scoop of clam chowder and then he took a scoop of the hot lobster roll and put it together. Mm. And some lady was like, what's that? I want that. And he goes, oh, I just fluffed up my chowder. She goes, I want a fluffy chowder. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it happens. And then that year we won Best Chowder for Fluffy Chowder. Fluffy Chowder. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Mm. Now, on to the old salt. I hear they've got a seafood stew that I can't miss. Hey there, how are you? Good, how are you doing today? Very, very good. Some yeah, serious seafood production yeah, going on. How much lobster goes in like one of these vats? Of 25 pounds of uh, lobster oh. meat in there. And then there's shrimp, scallops, crab uh, as well, potatoes. Yeah, there it is right there. Oh my goodness. Well, there's, a, there's a claw right there. Oh my. I think I'm definitely going to order the lobster seafood chowder. That looks amazing. Enjoy. Mmm. I just love how chunky this is. Tons of seafood in here. It's almost like having a lobster bisque and a chowder mixed together with a little bit of spicy notes with the cayenne pepper. Just a fantastic dish, and of course it has to go in a bread bowl, right? What's a chowder without bread bowl? The chowders were great. I definitely have some ideas for my own recipe, but I can't leave before checking out one last booth, Petey's Summertime Seafood. Hey there. Hey, how you doing? Very good, I am stuffed full of chowder right now. But I keep seeing people walk around with lobsters on a stick and other things on a stick. I think you're the guy we're quite better than a lobster to put yeah. on a stick, right? I'll take the tail and some of the claws. Okay. Those are just like smothered in butter, right? Yeah. You, just, you keep them in butter all day. All day. That's They're how like we heat them up. Marinating in butter. Right? Yeah. That, I love that. Oh boy. How is it? Wow. You're not kidding. All right, let me try the tail now. So good. I think you should heat everything up in butter. I know. I think that's like the key to life. People love it. This is great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, enjoy this. Mm. This lobster on a stick is great. Petey's got a good thing going on here. You have to check out the Hampton Seafood Festival. This place is amazing. Must see. Now it's time to go make my own chowder. I tried a ton of great chowders and stews at the Hampton Seafood Festival, so I thought I'd make my own fish chowder. And first things first, I'm gonna chop up my vegetables before I start my roux. I'm gonna get two branches of celery, and this is just a rough chop. Should be good right there. A bowl. And now, some fennel. Just take the tops off. But I'm gonna save the fronds for a nice, lovely garnish. I really like using fennel. I think it works well with the seafood chowder. Now I'm gonna cut up two shallots, just a rough dice. Good, right there. All right, so my veggies are chopped, ready to go. Uh, now I wanna heat up my pan. I'm gonna start off by adding two tablespoons of butter, and this is gonna be the base for my roux, and that's gonna bring body to the whole chowder. Now I'm gonna add my vegetables. I just wanna sweat these, no color. Just wanna get them until they're transparent, but not caramelized. All right, now I'm gonna add my flour a little bit at a time, just to start it out. You don't want to add too much, um, otherwise it's going to clump up. And just keep in mind, you want to constantly be stirring this. You add some flour, you don't stir it, and you're just going to get these little pockets of raw flour. That's no good. All right, so this is looking really good. The roux is really coming together. Now I'm going to add some cedra. This is just going to add a really nice sweet kick to it. With every pour, give it a stir. Keep doing that until you have a nice, solid, creamy base. This is looking absolutely delicious. So the base of my chowder is done. 
I made some stock ahead of time. This is gonna be the bulk of this chowder. So if you can, make it ahead of time, just because it takes a few hours to make some stock. It's probably about two and a half cups of stock to this. There you go. All right, so my chowder's looking really good. It's coming together nice. Now I'm gonna start cutting my fish. And I have here some beautiful halibut. It's definitely not a traditional choice, but it's my preference. It's just a wonderful clean fish, especially for this chowder. And I'm just gonna dice this guy up. Don't need to get too perfect with the dice, but you still wanna keep him relatively the same size because you want him to cook at the same pace. I think this is looking pretty good. Now I'm just gonna add it to the chowder. I love seeing the chunks of fish and chowder. It's like you know it's a seafood chowder. But I wanna add just a few more touches to it and uh, sort of pack some aroma and some spice in it. So first thing, a little bit of thyme. And what you wanna do is just run your fingers right down the stem. And this is gonna pull all those leaves off so you're not chewing on stems when you're eating your chowder. That should be good right there. So the last touch of flavor I'm gonna be adding to this chowder is Old Bay. And I didn't really grow up on this stuff, but out here it's just a staple for most seafood dishes. So I'm gonna add just a little bit to my chowder. Not too much, just maybe like a teaspoon. Also I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper to this. I mean right away you can smell some of the spices in the Old Bay. It's kind of like this clove and cinnamon flavor, uh, but also it has some red spices going on. Now, I'm gonna finish this off with a little bit of heavy cream. Add this towards the very end of your chowder recipe, uh, just because it tends to break down the more it boils. And this is gonna lighten up the color of the chowder and uh, bring a richness to it. It's looking good. All right, my chowder is definitely finished. This is looking just absolutely great. Get a few ladles of this beautiful chowder right in this bowl. I love how you can just see the halibut pop right away. Just gonna garnish it. A little bit of fennel fronds. This is just gonna give a little bit of color on top. Fennel fronds are just really pretty. Plus it might add just a little bit of licorice flavor. Get my oyster crackers out. And give this a pour. So with the oyster crackers, you wanna add these guys right at the last minute because you still want that crunch. You don't want them getting soggy. Good portion, why not? Just a few more. Now I'm gonna give this guy a taste. And right away you can see the halibut, just so chunky. It's packed full of flavor. The first thing I taste is that Old Bay. Some of that clove, spiciness to it. Just a wonderful flavor to this. Light seafood, really clean taste. The cedar just cuts right through the richness of this chowder and has a nice hint of apple. Just does a great job pairing with this. Thank you so much for watching. Join me next week as I head down the coast to Rhode Island.